fourth grade, it's Miss Tarleton here and I am outside in my backyard. The birds are chirping, the sun is shining, and I am ready to share another New Hampshire lesson with you guys from our uh, New Hampshire book that we've been working through this year. Um, and today we're gonna be in chapter three, The People. <clears throat> Daniel Webster, one of New Hampshire's most famous sons, is said to have made this comment about the rock formation known as the Old Man of the Mountain. Men hang out their signs indicative of their respective trades. Shoemakers hang out a gigantic shoe, jewelers a monster watch. But up in the mountains of New Hampshire, God Almighty has hung out a sign to show that here he makes men. New Hampshireites are proud of this quotation. They feel it implies something good about the character of the state's people. That they are rock solid, independent, courageous, and undaunted by the rigors of the harsh New Hampshire climate. They'll tell you that their people are hardworking, honest, frugal, and conservative. Of course, it is dangerous to make generalizations about people of a certain region, especially in a time when many people move half a dozen times in a lifetime. But symbols of good character are worth revering, and the old man is one the people of New Hampshire love dearly. Population growth and distribution. New Hampshire is one of the smallest states in terms of population. The nation's earliest census in 1790 counted 141,885 residents in New Hampshire. Over the next 50 years, this number doubled. Then growth slowed down as many of the state's young people left to start new communities on America's frontier. By 1850, all of the Great Lakes states Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota had many settlers who had come from New Hampshire. The gold rush in California and other prospects drew New Hampshireites to the West Coast as well. By 1950, New Hampshire's population was not quite double that of 1840, but since then, many newcomers have made their homes here in New Hampshire. According to the 1990 census, New Hampshire had 1,109,252 people, ranking us 40th in population among the states. Much of New Hampshire is still rural. Only a little more than half the people live in cities and towns. Did you guys know that our school is located in Summersworth, which is one of those cities of New Hampshire? The largest cities are concentrated in the southern part of the state. Two-thirds of New Hampshire's residents live in this region. Manchester is the, city's mo is the state's most populous city, followed by Nashua, Concord, our capital, Derry, Rochester, Portsmouth, Salem, and Dover. So I have a couple pictures I want to show you guys. Here's a picture of a 4-H competition at the Deerfield Fair, and we've been to the Deerfield Fair. And then here's some pictures of some children having a picnic and ice fishing on Bradley Lake. So as you can see, our people, our people of New Hampshire like to enjoy the ice fishing and picnicking and of course the Deerfield Fair is a tradition. New Hampshire's ethnic heritage. Piscataqua, Sunapee, Winnipesaukee, Winnisquam, Ossipee, Umbagog. These and many other New Hampshire place names are the legacy of Native Americans who lived in the region when the first European settlers arrived. These people, known as the Western Abenaki, belong to the eastern branch of the Algonquian language family, a large group of tribes related by similar languages and customs. Though most of the Indians left the region by the late 1700s, their early presence in New Hampshire contributed much to the state's character. New Hampshire's forests, wildlife, and seacoasts were responsible for bringing in the first European colonists. They were attracted by the abundance of fish and lobsters in the ocean and the fur-bearing animals and fine timber in the forests. A favorite New Hampshire story tells of a Boston preacher who came to Dover in the late 1600s. While giving a sermon, he urged his listeners to be faithful to the divine purpose for which this colony was planted only to be interrupted by a New Hampshire voice that declared, Parson, we came hither to fish. <laughs> Most of New Hampshire's earliest settlers were English or of English descent. Even today, people think of the typical New Hampshire native as being a Yankee, descended from Protestant English or Scottish colonists. In the 1990s, about half the state's residents fit that description. The development of industry in southern New Hampshire during the first half of the 19th 18th century was responsible for several waves of immigration. Posters displayed in England and Scotland advertised jobs in Manchester's 
Amiskeeg Textile Mills, promising good wages for spinners, weavers, and dyers. Irish immigrants were the first Europeans other than the English and the Scottish to come to New Hampshire in great numbers. First arriving in the 1840s, their numbers swelled in the 1850s after a great potato famine in Ireland starved them out. Meanwhile, the French-speaking Canadian province of Quebec, which bordered New Hampshire on the north, was having trouble supporting its fast-growing population. Many French Canadians began to move to New England during the second half of the 19th century. By 1900, about 18% of New Hampshire's people were of Quebec origin. Today, about one-third of the state's people are of French-Canadian descent. And in fact, we have a lot of them in, in this specific region of New Hampshire where we live. You hear names like um, Rouleau and Gagné or Gagné, those names are of French Canadian descent. So you probably know people without even realizing it that are of French Canadian descent. Pretty cool stuff, guys. So many of the earliest French Canadians came to work in the textile centers. Others cut wood in the northern lumber camps or became brickmakers. The newcomers quickly established French Canadian churches, newspapers in French and French Catholic schools. At first, the French Canadians formed tight-knit communities that were called Petite Canadas, Little Canadas. This kept them out of the mainstream of New Hampshire politics for a time, but by the turn of the century, French Canadians who had become bilingual and bicultural began to gain political influence. The late 1800s also saw an influx of German, Italian, Polish, and Greek immigrants, as well as smaller numbers of people from Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. Today, only about 4% of the state's residents are foreign-born. The national average is 6%. 10% of the population speak a language other than English at home, and more than 60,000 people claim French as their first language. About 98% of the state's residents are white, a far greater proportion than the national average of 83%. African Americans make up less than 1% of the population. I wanna stop for a sec before I keep reading this book. Um, so this book was actually published back in 1992. So those numbers have changed quite a bit. And in fact, what's really cool is we have such a strong Indonesian population in Summersworth. In fact, there, um, there's an organization that's forming a little Indonesia here in Summersworth, here in New Hampshire. Um, so these numbers from this book are not quite current, but you can go to our state's website and um, look up more current numbers and I will try to get those for you in our next video. But just know that our, our great state is quite diverse and it's getting more and more diverse every single day. So that's pretty exciting, guys. All right, let's keep reading for my book, shall we? New Hampshire was overwhelmingly Protestant during its colonial and early statehood days. In fact, until 1819, Congregationalism was virtually the official religion of New Hampshire. All residents were taxed to support the Congregational Church. Gradually, other Protestant denominations, including the Baptist, Presbyterian, Quaker, and Anglican churches began to appear. In the second half of the 19th century, as the state's population became ethnically diverse, Roman Catholic, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, and Jewish congregations were established. However, non-Protestants were barred from holding state public office until 1877. The word Protestant was even used in the state's Bill, Bill of Rights. It was not removed from that document until 1902. Today, most New Hampshireites belong to one of the Protestant denominations. The Roman Catholics make up the largest single religious denomination. The leading Protestant churches in the state are the United Church of Christ, United Methodist, and American Baptist. Politically, New Hampshire has long been considered a conservative state. The Republican Party has been able to count on New Hampshire in almost every presidential election since 1945. In state and local offices, however, Democrats and Republicans are more evenly represented. In 1985, 33% of New Hampshire state leg legislators were women, the highest percentage of any state. And I'm going to close with this picture um, showing a state festival, um, showing a group of dancers actually in one of our state festivals. And we have a lot of state festivals. We have, I mean, obviously we talked about the Deerfield Fair earlier. And while that's a fair, there are so many different components that show off our great state. Our New Hampshire craftsmen and crafts workers, our 4-H club. And there are so many celebrations. One of my absolute favorites is the Greek festival here in Dover every year. Um, I live only a few miles down from um, the, the hall and they have 
great music, great food. There's so much culture around us and I encourage you guys today and in, um, in the upcoming days and weeks and as you go into your summer vacation, begin to start looking for different cultural aspects that we have around here in New Hampshire and embrace them and celebrate them. Um, you know, God didn't design every single one of us to be the same cookie cutter looking and um, having the same traditions and everything. That would be really boring, wouldn't it? So I want you guys today um, and, and as you continue your studies and as you go through life to, to find ways to celebrate all the different cultures and all the different peoples that are here in New Hampshire. All right, thank you students for hanging out with me. I will catch you later. This is Miss Tarleton signing off. Bye.